Today, much of the world is facing very high levels of inflation, with rising prices and stagnant wages, meaning people are able to buy much less and must reduce their spending in order to afford essential goods and services. In the 1970s, the situation around the world was very similar, and in the United Kingdom, it was especially bad, with both high unemployment and high inflation, in a combination known as stagflation. But while many in government sought an answer to this ongoing problem, one politician had a radical plan to restore the British economy. This is the story of the plan to turn Great Britain into North Korea. In the 1970s, the British economy was in bad shape. At the time, the UK and much of the West was subject to an oil embargo by most countries in the Middle East, causing oil prices to skyrocket, with this and other factors driving up inflation. In addition, Many of the industries that had previously been the main engines of the economy and had provided thousands of jobs, such as coal, steel, and shipbuilding, most of which were state-owned, were in deep decline, as they were being made unprofitable by cheaper competition from the United States and other members of the European Economic Community, an organization that Britain had only joined in 1973. This meant Britain faced the problem of rising unemployment but also that the UK was importing more goods from Europe and America than it exported, meaning every day Britain was losing money and fast. This meant the government had less money and couldn't afford to increase the pay of government workers in key industries, which at a time of high inflation was a big problem. In the end, the situation got so bad that the British government, at the time headed by Prime Minister James Callaghan and the Labour Party, had to ask the International Monetary Fund or IMF, for a loan of $3.9 billion in order to keep the economy afloat while the government restructured, mainly by cutting state investments in the economy. This was deeply humiliating since the IMF usually lent money to developing economies in Africa and Asia, and this was their largest ever loan. This, some said, reflected the status that Britain was fast becoming a third world country. But there was one man who objected to this course of action and proposed his own alternative. Tony Benn was on the very left wing of the Labour Party and disliked much of how the British economic and social system operated. Benn nearly always advocated for increased government involvement in the economy and increased power to the trade unions. One journalist would describe Benn as a dangerous politician who stirs up and then exploits political trouble who will bring Britain to ruin and use the rubble for the foundations of a collectivist society. Ben objected to the government's appeal to the IMF and the resulting cuts in state expenditure as going against the socialist principles of the Labour Party. He also disliked the International Monetary Fund, which he saw as part of a global capitalist system. In fact, Tony Benn had even been against Britain joining the European Economic Community, seeing it as a free market capitalist cartel, saying, quote, The European Community will destroy the whole basis on which the Labour movement is founded and its commitment to democratic change. And so, Benn rejected the plan to rebuild the economy with the International Monetary Fund and instead came up with his own plan, which he called the Alternative Economic Strategy. According to Ben's plan, Britain would adopt a siege economy and set up enormous trade barriers to stop the flow of cheap foreign goods into Britain. Trade with the outside world would be nearly entirely cut off. Once that was done, Ben said the UK would be free to adopt a fully socialist economy with strict wage and price controls to halt inflation, followed by nationalisation of all key industries and near total control and planning of the economy. This would allow British industry to recover as it filled the demand gap left by foreign imports. Ben was also a notable Republican, and if by some turn of events he had become Prime Minister, which in the 1970s and 80s was not impossible, he might have later pushed the idea to abolish the monarchy and the House of Lords. This proposed level of isolation and government control of the economy was unlike anything else seen in Western Europe, with the only comparison being with the communist economies of Eastern Europe, the Soviet Union, and North Korea. Of course, Ben's plan would have never been supported by the British public, and even other high-ranking members of the Labour Party opposed it, with Dennis Healy, the minister in charge of the economy, saying the idea was not a strategy, but a caricature. If Ben's plan had been put into motion, it probably would have been a disaster. 
would have been impossible to stop all imports and still maintain acceptable living standards, which meant that it would also have not been practical as a way to completely stop inflation. Also, putting up trade barriers with the rest of the world would not have been compatible with Britain's membership of the European Economic Community or even the global free market. Furthermore, it would have been unrealistic for Britain to impose trade barriers on other countries without expecting them to retaliate and impose trade barriers of their own, thereby crushing Britain's export economy and further damaging British manufacturing. Ben's plan was never presented to the public, and of the few Labour politicians who heard of it, a vast majority instantly rejected Ben's idea of Fortress Britain. Instead, despite the humiliation involved, Britain pushed ahead with a loan from the IMF and large cuts in public spending. In the end, Ben's plan to turn Britain into the North Korea of Europe probably represents a last-ditch attempt to isolate Britain from changing economic forces. From now on, the era of Britain as an island isolated from globalization was over. I hope you enjoyed this video and thanks for watching. If you'd like to see more from Newsreel History and help more content get made, please consider subscribing and I'll see you next time.